Shabbat Shalom, Exacting Truth Body Fellowship members, and of course, the Exacting Truth landscape of body fellowship believers across that food claim that fellowship with us, irrespective of where your membership may lie. Welcome to another Exacting Truth Ministries Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. I'm your host, Shepherd Solera, our man junior, the pastor and leader in, leading emissary at Exacting Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Will you bow your heads and pray with me at this time? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand has made. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. We thank you for protection and provision with regards to our families, our relatives, loved ones, our children, neighbors, friends, co-workers, even our enemies this morning. We're asking that you come into this service. We're asking that you accept our posture of worship, that you accept our praise, prayer, and uh, everything that we send up to you, Father. We pray that it's pleasing, lead, and guide our steps today. We're asking that you remember those this morning that need remembering everywhere, those who are in need of prayer and sustenance with regard to healing, those who are in need of uh, prayer and intercessory, and we're asking that you give us to be the proper conduits and emissaries on their behalf. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for uh, your Healing mercy, we thank you for your grace unto us. We're just asking right now that you remember those, once again, that need remembering, people that are fearful, skeptical, unbelieving because of man's dogma and their hypocrisy, their sacrilege, which is robbing of the faith, aberrant walk with regards to the orthodoxy of your scripture and way. Help us as believers not to blame you when mankind has disappointed us and has betrayed us. Help us not to blame you for what mankind has done. And we're asking right now that you give us the power and that you give us the sagacity and wisdom so that we might navigate in this evil age, in this tumultuous age, that we might be lights to this dark world and that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for all of the celebrations uh, that have gone on of late, those who have had another succession around that great star, giving them another year. We're grateful, grateful for anniversaries, people who uh, are still together and operating and walking in love and unity. And we are grateful for that. And we're just asking that you just have your way, speak in our hearing, let it be you and not we ourselves. And as we incline our ears and minister grace to every here and allow us to leave the better for coming this life. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Christ's name we pray, amen. Blessings to you this morning, beloved Shabbat Shalom, blessed Saturday Sabbath to all of you Sabbath keepers out there, and even those that are going to join us in at your convenience at a later date, we're blessed and we're grateful for the faithful, and we're happy to be alive, everybody can't say that. And so hopefully you're doing well. We're praying on your behalf. We're uh, grateful for the Most High joining us and meeting us once again in another in-person exacting insight into the Word Wednesday uh, Bible study and question and answer. And truly, we had a rich time with the Most High once again. And we're grateful for all of you all who've been holding Lady Joy up in prayer, haven't been feeling well last uh, week or so, but the Most High sustaining her, and we want to report that uh, she's uh, feeling better and uh, moving and progressing towards health, and so we're grateful for all of that. Let's keep one another in prayer. There's so many people that we hold up in prayer. The actual opening prayer would be too long if we call the name, but we remember Brother Chris McGraw's friend, Miss Tamu, he continued to pray for her. She He, he had a, a very powerful praise report on Wednesday. He was sharing with us that, you know, the prayers, listen, they're not... For granted, Ms. Tamu was uh, telling Brother Chris, and I'm sure he doesn't mind me sharing this personal information, that, you know, literally the procedures that she's going through, that the doctors were talking uh, with regards to the reestablishment of, like, new and, uh, and, and stronger blood vessels when other ones, uh, you know, had collapsed or what have you. I'm not telling exactly what he told it, but it sounded miraculous, and we just praised the most high. We uh, spoke briefly with Uncle Billy Wilson Sr., our very own Uncle Billy Wilson, uh, yesterday, and he's uh, doing good and progressing and, you know, uh, operating above board with regards to the restoration of his health. And so we're just grateful for that. We're going to continue to hold up our very own landscape brother, Brother Jesse, Sister Brittany, 
um, you know, a, uh, a friend of our family, uh, Nurse Debbie, uh, Lady Joy and myself, we're going to hold them up in prayer. Now, everything isn't about people that need prayer and recovery. I appreciate my grandson on last Friday. I think I failed to mention it on last Saturday, uh, becoming five years old. Once again, happy birthday, little Idris, little man getting tall as I don't know what. And then uh, Secretary Davis uh, celebrated a birthday. Mom Diana had a birthday last Sunday. Uh, Secretary Davis had a birthday on Thursday. Happy birthday again, uh, Secretary Davis. And uh, Bishop and Mom Diana had uh, celebrated what appears to be their one millionth wedding anniversary on uh, yesterday. Um, we're just uh, grateful uh, for that example and that staying power. One millionth, is that an excuse for you not knowing exactly which one it is? Partially, but I'm just grateful uh, for the example that my parents are. All right, we're going to get to the word. Y'all know on Saturday Sabbath, we hold up the Holy Writ. Why? Because it contains words of the Most High, words that were left on record for our learning. So symbolically, we hold it up because we look unto it and up to it and not down to our own understanding. We are looking to the hill, Scripture say, from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Most High that has made the heavens and the earth. And so we pray that you're looking up today and not down, beloved. And if you are looking down, look up, because if you feel like you're falling and falling far, if you've hit the ground, you can't go any further. So it's time to look up today. Amen. Would you please join us in the reading of the Holy Writ this morning? We're going to read from the Greek scriptures, the Gospel of Levi, more commonly known as the Gospel of Matthew, chapter six. Uh oh, Matthew chapter six. Some believers, even though Matthew chapter 6 should be the quintessential promise and uh, encouragement scripture in the Gospels, a lot of people view it with disdain because it challenges faith. But yeah, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, verses 25 through 34 rather, and we're going to be reading from the New International Version of the English Translation of Matthew chapter 6. So if you have the capability of joining us there, we'd be much obliged. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ this morning, beloved, and it reads as thus, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, NIV. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Some people have already shut down their Bible apps, closed their Bible, and preparing to log off. Now you see what I'm talking about with regard to Matthew chapter 6, because it challenges in things that some of us just feel like is ridiculous uh, to even view the notion of not worrying. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, I'm sorry, I'm digressing. I don't have all day. I got rehearsals and things after this, but I just can't seem to get past that, because how are we supposed to do that? I'm not even talking about y'all. Once again, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. Mm, mm, mm. Anybody here getting older? What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes, the Christ is asking. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Now, depending on who you ask in this day and time, that could be quite an important question, but I digress again. 27, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? That's a very good question posed by the Hamashiach. Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. The flowers that he is talking about how the heavenly father takes care of the things that are in creation. 30, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now y'all see the promises that the Hamashiach is presenting with regards to our relationship with the Heavenly Father and believing that he's a beneficent and a loving Father and that he will take care of us and that he understands our concerns and he has our well-being and our best interests in mind. Verse 31, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? 
or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness first. There's a basis of what he gave to the Hebrew Israelites with regard to tithe, Nazareth, a first tenth of your life. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, the things that you normally worry about, the Christ is referring to, will be given to you as well. Wow. Finally, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Is that not true? And this is thousands of years old. Each day has enough trouble of its own. My Lord, may the Most High add a blessing to and an enriching to the reading of the Holy Writ. Beloved, for the time allotted to me this morning to speak to you in duration, the title of our text is simply titled The Greatest Test of Our Faith. It's far less complicated than we may realize. The general definition for the English verb worry is to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts. And I don't know if you all realized how critical <laughs> the actual definition of worry is in origin. I'm going to say that again, to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts. Beloved, it literally means to fret. So, Worry is synonymous with the epicenter of fear. Paul the Apostle explained to his protege, Timothy, in his second letter to him, first chapter, seventh verse, for God, the most high God of the Hebrews, of course, hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If Paul's instruction to Timothy is indeed accurate, beloved, then the origins of our fears and what we literally fret about do not emanate from the almighty creator. Thus making the fretful process of worry the literal antithesis, or in other words, opposite of faith, which is the trust, faith that is, and belief of something to take place and to materialize before it actually occurs. You believe that it's going to happen before it has happened. Many of us may have never viewed worry or being worrisome in this manner because it's such a common phenomenon, seemingly natural to us all. Who hasn't worried? But it appears through the teachings, explanations, and warnings broken down in Scripture that something as easily occurring as worry may very well be the most common threat to having and applying faith in our lives. I don't know if I believe that, Shepherd Man. Well, hang in there with us. We're going somewhere with this. If you're anything like Shepherd Man this morning, and I'm going to be very transparent, beloved, and I'm going to confess and profess once again that you, we need to find ministers and prophets and teachers where when the Most High sends a word according to and in Bible order, that that thing comes to them. How else are they going to carry it if it doesn't come to them first? And I'm telling you, this word came to me, beloved. We're just sharing it with you. This word came and it hit me hard this morning. If you're anything like me and I'm going to be transparent, you've literally found yourself worrying about any and everything. I mean, the smallest details of things. It's almost nothing that you haven't found yourself worrying about. I'm being transparent this morning. Not only has this not been healthy and has taken its mental and physical toll on me personally, I'm confessing, but it brings even greater emphasis and clarity to scripture verses such as the epistle of James, for example, chapter four, verse three, which states, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss 
that ye may consume it upon your lust. Even you, shepherd man, listen, we're under conviction today. I'm being transparent. I hope y'all out there acting like, not acting like rather that y'all brand new, but listen, it, it, it actually grants relevance to this verse where you know, I don't choose to see myself through that verse. Listen, the term amiss in James chapter four, verse three means out of order. And lust means inordinate desires, or in other words, wants and desires that are not within proper or reasonable limits. Desires that are excessive in essence. Beloved, what is the common culprit and conduit in our reactions in life that on a daily basis has contributed to our process of doing things and what we desire contributed to those processes being completely out of whack and out of sorts. So much so until not even our prayers go forth in the proper manner to warrant positive reception and replies from our Heavenly Father. Can we be honest about what's actually occurring? Could it be that the worry that most of us apply to the process of most of the things we desire to do or are attempting to accomplish are negatively contributing and largely responsible for all of the disarray? It's nothing like wanting, desiring, hoping, trusting, even praying. And alongside that, as an attachment, as a companion to those prayers, to those hopes, is nothing but unmitigated, pure, stark worry. How are they going to take life and take flight when they're being neutered by pure fear? Because the definition of the verb worry literally means to fret. We worry about our health, do we not? We worry about money, do we not? We worry about friendship. Let's be honest. Who is our friend? Who, who, who's backbiting behind our back? Who's loyal? Who's not? We worry with regards to trusting folks. We worry about our jobs and the stability of the entire job market for that matter. We worry about the food that we're going to eat. Will it be good? Will it be affordable? Will we have access to it? Will it be cooked properly? Will it make us sick? Will it make us well? <laughs> we worry about the price of food. We worry about inflation. We worry about having access to enough food choices. I can't stand where I live because there are not enough restaurants. There's not enough variety. I'm sick of eating the same thing. We worry about the price of gasoline, how much it costs, how much it costs to get to the gas station in order to get the gasoline that costs too much. We worry about the OPEC nations, the uh, nations that produce oil, oil producing nations, as it were, for that acronym. We worry about the folks that are out there in that world that we don't even know. We worry about what strangers sometimes think of us. We worry about what folks are saying, once again, behind our backs. We worry about our reputation. Separate man, when are you going to end this? We'll see. Because we worry about a whole lot of stuff. I just wanted to demonstrate just some of the things we worry about. We worry about our children, Lord knows, do we not? We worry about our grandchildren. We worry about our parents. We worry about other relatives. We worry about our spouses <laughs> and our significant others. Some of us worry about being single. Some of us worry about divorce. Some of us worry about other folks and their choices and their personal business that don't have nothing to do with us. We worry about the state of the world. We worry about the planet. We worry about animals. We worry about trees. We worry about the climate. We worry about war. We worry about peace. We worry about facts. We worry about opinions. We worry about the almighty creator. We worry about our adversary, high Satan. Okay, I'm going to stop. But the list seems endless. Worry, worry, worry. And with this much worry, with this much fretfulness, as worry is literally defined once again. Let me ask you a question. Where's the room for faith? Applying the removal of so much worry, 
seems to instantly solve many of society's major issues. Consequently, it does. It absolutely does. You take worry out the equation and you find things by default healing themselves. Now, we live through the word. For example, in the first epistle of John, the apostle and evangelist, chapter 4, verse 18, John the apostle writes, there is no fear. In other words, there is no worry or fretfulness in love. But perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. Lord knows it does. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Wow. In other words, all of this fretfulness is affecting how we love or if we love at all. Remove the worry, remove the fretting, and love thus is able to thrive. Wow. Do all these folks in the world, if y'all doubt what we just shared as being accurate, do all these folks in the world that seem to hate one another, prejudicial and racist to no end, despite the fact that they don't know one another from a can of paint, do they truly hate each other? Or in reality, are they actually more afraid of one another and what they may not know or understand about one another? And it's really fear that's driving all of this angst. The scary thing is that this can be said of folks that are in committed relationships as well. Some of the things that we fail to know or understand about one another can drive fear that ultimately can drive people in relationships apart. Somebody out there knows what Shepherd Man is talking about. This was a short one today, but I'm going to begin to conclude. And I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave you under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, a simple fix out of Holy Scripture, which admittedly so has appeared to be an impossibly elusive task to our flesh, which are the words written by Paul the Apostle to the body ecclesia at Philippi, Philippians chapter 4 verses six and seven. And this is going to be read from and referencing the new international version of that English translation. Paul wrote, do not be anxious about anything. <laughs> about anything? But in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to Almighty God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in the Hamashiach, Christ Jesus. If y'all thought that was something, the New Living Translation version of Philippians chapter four, verse six, states it even more simply and clearly. Do not worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? I can just sense a bunch of folk out there that's going to hear this message or that's listening to me right now saying to themselves, see, that's my problem with all of this religious stuff. How are we supposed to not worry about anything? I mean, that stuff that's written thousands of years ago and we're not sure who wrote it. We don't know if it's just a concoction of the Catholic Church, so many of y'all say. But anyway, irrespective, how that ain't even realistic. How are we not supposed to worry or fret about anything? That ain't nowhere near realistic. Beloved, <laughs> I'm closing. But I just want to be honest with you. I'm not going to be less than transparent this morning. I can completely relate to that assertion. No judgments from me. If I were to be completely honest myself, I can relate. But I also have to state under the fear and admonition of the Holy Ghost, that is where faith has been completely deficient in even those that we view as some of the most staunch believers. 
may be hard to hear, but it's true, beloved. Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 1 states, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. A person will say to themselves or to others, nothing in this life is guaranteed. We'll encourage people by saying that. We'll try to uplift one another. And we call ourselves keeping it real, as it were. Listen, ain't nothing in this life guaranteed. And then we'll go on <laughs> to being perpetually upset and off kilter because the things that we all hope for are not guaranteed prior to them taking place. We'll tell somebody else, nothing is guaranteed. But we'll go into job interviews, hoping and trusting. And, and in our hearts, somewhere deep down inside, if we were to be honest, wishing that this thing was guaranteed ours before we even complete the job interview or the loan process of trying to obtain financing or whatever you might want to fill in the blank. Saying one thing, it's like talking out of both sides of our neck. <laughs> nothing is guaranteed and in our heart believing that that's the, you know, nothing is further from the truth uh, in fact we want everything that we want guaranteed I hope I'm praying and, and speaking with somebody that has the capability of being honest today faith is the key beloved and we ought not to act as though what is being suggested is a completely foreign concept why do we claim to believe but we act like faith is so hard Y'all had to know we had something up our sleeve. I can almost guarantee. And I personally have total faith in the statement I'm about to make. Y'all ready? That none of us lived our night out last night as if we didn't expect to wake up and be alive right now this morning. Ain't no way you did. Some people wouldn't lay down the way that you laid down last evening. Or lie down last evening. Some of us wouldn't have lied down at all. That's faith. That's hope. And darn well near complete trust. That <laughs> when I close my eyes, I'm not even thinking about the fact that they're not going to open ever again. Now you see that type of faith in tomorrow correlates with what Christ was ministering to his disciples left on record for our learning in Matthew 6. That, if that ain't take no thought for your life, what is? We're literally talking about our mortality and we don't even question it. We don't give a thought. How many of you all have planned and slated in your day to live as if today will be your last? Somebody may not like this, you know, because it's hard to run from but yet we question having faith in some of the most minuscule and smaller of the things that we encounter in life. We don't worry about waking up, but we worry about everything else. Don't tell me you can't have faith. If we weren't really that concerned with not waking up from our night's sleep, then why are we so concerned about dinner this evening? Why are we so concerned about the laundry getting taken care of or about the well-being of our jobs or our neighbors for that matter. Beloved, it really is time to truly operate under the conviction that the almighty creator of all things has got us. Our literal minds, bodies, and souls depend upon it because the way we're carrying this fretfulness and this worry is having a negative imperative and impact on our thoughts, which is affecting our physical Nature, which is affecting ultimately and will have an impact on our soul in the end. What's that song, India, from Frozen? Let it go. Disney ain't doing a lot of things right in this day and time, from my purview and opinion, but that may be something that y'all might want to listen to after the, 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 the service is over with. Wait until the afterward. Don't pull it up now. Yeah, let, there's some stuff we need to let go. When we look back in the past and we think about all of the stuff that we worried about, then we look at how far the Most High brought us. Didn't he bring us a mighty long way? When are we going to begin to trust moving forward that some of this stuff just ain't worth our time? 
some of these raggedy people, I know he's giving us the love, but we got to be honest before we can love. Some of these raggedy people who have the worst intentions for us and can't be honest, you, that, you just got to let stuff go. Where is there a rule or a scripture that says, because they're raggedy, thou must be raggedy? Let folk be raggedy in their own place. Pray for them and keep it moving. Or not. But this fretfulness about any and everything does not add up, doesn't make sense. Because somehow we're able to shut it down in order to move on to the next day without worrying about whether we're going to move on to the next day. That's fascinating. Who would have thought, and we're going to close and pray, that the greatest test to our faith, the greatest challenge to us walking in faith from day to day, walking in trust and belief and hope, that it's yea and amen with regards to his promises concerning us, his grace towards us, salvation given to us freely. Who would have thought that the greatest test to our faith would not be King Kong? or Godzilla. Come on, Shepard, man, be serious. <laughs> Those are fictional monsters in movies. Yeah, sometimes we make King Kong out of how we disagree with folks. Who would have thought that it wouldn't be King Kong that would be the greatest test to our faith? Who would have thought that possible nuclear Armageddon would not be the greatest test to our faith? Who would have even thought for that matter that you and I, one towards another, would not be the greatest test? to our faith, but that rather and possibly the greatest test to each and every one of our faith would be whether or not we could stop worrying about every little thing and just trust in the most high. Much food for thought, amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me as we close? Heavenly Father, forgive us, <laughs> forgive us. We may feel like that things contribute and there are attributes that cause us to worry, but listen, according to your word and according to reality, worry has not come from you. It doesn't emanate from you. It's something that we do ourselves and it's very toxic to our well-being. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, and we won't be remiss to ever mention that we believe that said forgiveness and such forgiveness is nigh us because of the sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach, that died for all of this, that died so that we could be expunged from our fretfulness and our worry and our fears, but didn't stay dead. Rose again, where he ascended to your right hand, where he currently is making intercession for each and every one of us, of which this powerful lesson this morning is an example of said intercession. And we pray that you make us sozos, or in the English, make us safe such as what was written by Paul the Apostle to the body of Ecclesia in Rome, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that you save us, which means that you rescue us and preserve us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings and the strength to be able to just let stuff go and just to trust you. This world and this corporeal and carnal world doesn't make it easy, but... We need to set our affections on things above. We pray and trust that you'll give us the strength to do so, that it's already done. And we thank you, Father, for sustaining us in your grace, even through worrisome times. We ask these blessings and many more. In that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, in the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to say to Auntie Maggie, thank you for all of the books. Thank you for all of the support for the family. We love you everybody else that's showing support and prayer. Continue to hold us up in prayer. Listen, join us this Wednesday in another Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday Bible study and question and answer. If you haven't met us live, you're missing out. And then followed by another uh, Saturday Sabbath Facebook online. Listen, don't forget about November the 5th. Families, friends, even our enemies is invited. Listen, we're going to have a great time in prayer, praise, in worship, in fellowship, and we're going to break bread afterwards. It's our Praise Fest, Family and Friends Day. You don't want to miss it. November the 5th, Saturday, 1030. Beloved, Shabbat Shalom. And until we meet again, have a peaceful Saturday, Sabbath, and rest. Blessings to you.